united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning and welcome to United with Christ. I'm Deb Gray and I'm the Executive Director of Westside Pregnancy. And I have a very special guest with me again, Miss Esther. And we're going to continue our conversation about post-abortion healing and also some of the trauma that they go through. It's a very, it's a hard topic to talk about, but it's very much needed. So again, we're so glad that you joined us this morning and I'm gonna pray over our time. And I also wanna let you know that if any time during this, this program that you need someone to pray with, there is a prayer line and the telephone number is 915-532-8518. Let's just invite the Lord to, to be with us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you so much that you died for us on Calvary to forgive our sins, Father God, and to give us grace and mercy. Father, I just ask that you be with this, this program this next 30 minutes when we tackle some hard topics, Father God. Lord, again, we just, we love you and we praise you. And we ask this all in your sweet, wonderful name. Amen. Esther, thank you so much for coming back with us. We had you last Friday and we didn't quite get to talk about all the topics that you wanted to touch on. So um, if you'll just kind of recap a little bit about what we talked about last Friday and then we'll start talking about some of the different issues. Okay, great. Um, I do want to open with some scripture. Um, so I'm, I, um, I'm, I pulled out a scripture that we use in our, in our ministry from Luke 8, uh, 40 to 48. When Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. A man named Jairus, an official of the synagogue, came forward. He fell at the feet of Jesus and begged him to come to his house because he had only one daughter about 12 years old and she was dying. As he went to the crowds, the crowds almost crushed him. A woman afflicted with uh, hemorrhages for 12 years who had spent her whole livelihood on doctors was unable to be cured by anyone, came up behind him and touched the tassel on his cloak. Mm -hmm. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. Jesus then asked, who touched me? While all were denying it, Peter said, Master, the crowds were pushing and pressing in upon you. But Jesus said, Someone has touched me, for I know that the power has gone out from me. When the woman realized they noticed her, they, that they noticed her, she came forward trembling. Falling down before him, she explained in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been healed immediately. He said to her daughter, your faith has saved you. Mm. Go in peace. Mm. Oh, what a beautiful oh, story. Yes. Beautiful story. So this is, this is actually one of the, the scriptures that we use in our Rachel's Vineyard retreat. Um, uh, Rachel's Vineyard is, is, a, is a weekend retreat that we offer for anyone who's been affected by abortion. And we use scripture readings um, to take them through the process of healing. Um, to begin their process of healing, I should say, because healing is a journey. And, um, and so we use these scripture readings. They're very powerful, um, and it allows um, these people to see the power of God, um, his mercy, his love, and his forgiveness. So, oh, so I wanted amen. to share that with you. Um, so, yeah, so um, a little bit about myself. Um, as a young teenager, I did find myself in an unplanned pregnancy, um, and chose abortion. Um, I was not told the effects. Um, I was not properly counseled when I made that decision. I made a decision in, in, um, in the heat of the moment with mm -hmm. a lot of, mm -hmm. of conflict um, going within me and not properly counseled, not properly, properly guided, and not properly informed. 
Um, and because of that, um, through my healing journey, um, it's brought me a, a, to a place where I've really looked into things and researched things and, and learned why it affected me the way it did. Um, to come to find out that it doesn't just affect me, it affects many, many other women. So we have been blessed to encounter many people that have come through Rachel's Vineyard. So we've had grandparents come on our weekend. We've had siblings. Um, we've even had the person who drove the woman to the mm -hmm. clinic, the abortion mm -hmm. clinic, or paid for the abortion um, that we see that carry guilt, you know, guilt on, up, you know, with participating. That's something that we don't think about is just how many people that it does affect when right. one girl exactly. has her abortion. Mm -hmm. And of course, they, she's not told that either. Um, she's told this will be taken care of, this problem will be taken care of, um, you don't have to think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, this we know that this is not true. Um, so uh, Rachel's Vineyard, of course, we also have the, the, the person, the woman that had the abortion, possibly her spouse or partner. Um, so we have a variety of people. We've seen women, um, who were young teenagers who were forced by their parents. We mm -hmm. see women who mm -hmm. were in college and they just felt they couldn't move forward with their plans of, of co finishing college with this pregnancy. Um, we've had victims of rape, um, date rape, violent rape, um, and also incest. And so we see um, how it affects everyone. No matter what led them to that decision, they are affected in a very deep way, and um, and so we're there with open arms of compassion, um, helping them to start their, their healing journey. Tell us a little bit more about some of the trauma that they go through, just even some of the symptoms okay. you know, that might face them. Yeah, so there is, there is post-abortion trauma that happens. Um, some women will experience it right away, and some it takes them many years. Um, and so we see uh, the, the two main ones is it, it um, brings upon depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. For the women that chose abortion because they were already dealing with depression and anxiety, it enhances those symptoms. Um, we see women who turn to drinking, to drug abuse, to suppress, help suppress those memories. Um, we see women who become promiscuous. They lose a sense of self-worth and so they say, what the heck? And so they, they, they start looking for love in all the wrong places, mm -hmm. and um, which is just creating a deeper hurt you know, upon themselves. We see women who, um, who begin eating disorders. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. And so it, so it affects us women in, in so many ways. Um, and we also know that, um, that if healing does not start um, when it's needed, then there is a chance that they will go back and have multiple abortions. Oh, wow. You know, just at the pregnancy center, I hear so many stories of ladies coming in that um, their abortion, they had it 40 years ago, right. or they had it 14 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's something that is carried with them all the time. Right. And certain things like uh, bring that all back up. Can you tell us a little bit more that there might be triggers that happen and and how that they can find healing with that yes yes deb there are definitely triggers um from something as simple as a diaper commercial mm -hmm. a baby shower mm -hmm. um one of the major triggers for a woman is the anniversary of the abortion um sometimes the the abortion is really close to a very important holiday so that time of year is very hard for them um, the women we hear over and over again that they um, they remember the birthday of what mm -hmm. when their child would have been born their due date mm -hmm. and so this deeply affects them it without even knowing they do fall into a depression or they um, they struggle around that time of year and so um, so we see that happening um, now what you say is true you know 40 years many women you know we had a woman who was in her 80s her abortion was when she was 16. Oh. Um, but i've also had a call not too long ago of a girl um, and i asked her you know how long ago was your abortion and she said i'm still bleeding oh, wow. so her regret was immediate and so we just want to be there for them whenever they're ready we just want to be there for them um, but sometimes it is something that triggers them to remember 
um, and sometimes it's um, just finally it just surfaces and they're ready to start their healing journey. You know, I, I help me with this. Is there a way, because they don't get any of that counseling before they get the abortion. Right. No one is there to say, you know, you might be here for an instant fix, mm -hmm. but nobody talks about physically, spiritually, and mentally the things that you go through. Um, w what can we do uh, to educate these women? I know that we try during the at the pregnancy center, Correct. but like friends and churches, what can we do? Well, we need to create an environment where no matter how the pregnancy came about, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we need to watch our, the words that come, of, come out of our mouth um, and we need to be encouraging from, from beyond, before they even know they're pregnant. If we create an environment in our churches, in our homes, mm -hmm. in our schools, um, where we're talking about it, that's the number one challenge is we don't talk about it. And so when it happens, these girls don't know where to turn. Um, they don't feel comfortable telling their parents. They don't feel comfortable going to their church. Mm -hmm. um, and so they do what their friends are telling them to do and right. they end up at these clinics right. where they're not gonna be supported and they're not gonna be well informed of the three options that they do have when they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we, you know, I challenge everybody when I, when I speak about this is let's talk about it. Let's talk about unplanned pregnancies. Let's talk about the challenges. Um, how can we help these women that are faced with these unplanned pregnancies? And for the women who have already chosen abortion, one in every three women in America will go through an abortion at least one time in their life. That's a lot of, that's a, that's lot. a lot of us. That's a lot of women. And so, but nobody's talking about it. You don't, you don't go and have coffee with your girlfriends and talk about an abortion you had. Right. Um, so we right. need to start dialoguing about it, bringing it up, bringing it to the surface so these women are comfortable sharing their stories. Right. In a loving, non-judgmental -jud way. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, um, and what a way to truly be the, the heart of Christ to these young ladies. I think that... Um, we just need to, to start talking about it more in church. And um, again, it's such a delicate uh, topic mm -hmm. and things, uh, a topic that we've kind of swept to the side. Right. But it, it's time. It's time. Right. And it's hard. It's, it's something hard to talk about, um, you know, because it's we live we have created it into a, a political argument mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um but for that woman mm -hmm. who's had the abortion or the woman who's contemplating the abortion it's not a political thing for her right it's it's right. life it's it's her life it's a decision she has to make and it is a hard decision the challenge is is that sometimes these the majority of the time these decisions are made when you're pregnant when you're pregnant and your hormones are raging um you may feel um, just like you can't go to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so we need to create those, those environments, a safe place to be able to, to go to the safe people to, to guide us in, a, in, a, in the great right direction. Um, also talk about some of the health risks. That's another thing that they're not counseled very well on at right. all. Some of the things that can <clears throat> follow you um, as far as health history. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that's lacking in the abortion clinics is that um, any time that I've gotten a medical procedure, I just had my wisdom teeth pulled a couple weeks ago, I had to sit with the dentist and he had to go over all the possible complications that I mm -hmm. might have. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is not done in an abortion clinic environment. Um, and so we see women who, um, you know, like myself, I. I was technically sold a botched abortion. The abortion was not done correctly. Um, and I ended up in the emergency room needing a surgery. And, um, and so trying to avoid a financial mm -hmm. uh, burden of the baby ended up being a huge hospital bill for myself. But these women, um, you know, they're, they're, the surgical abortion is not done. They call it a blind procedure because they go in without any cameras mm -hmm. or without an ultrasound. And so uh, many women are physically hurt. Their, their uterus is, they're punctured or their cervix is injured. And so just the procedure itself could be 
harmful where it can prevent them, it can harm their fertility in the future. Um, but then um, I was just watching a documentary called Hush, and, and this was done in 2017, and I love this documentary because it's talking with pro-choice and uh, pro-life sides oh, and trying to get to the root of how does uh, the abortion procedure affect us as women in the future medically. Mm -hmm. And what the research has found is that it does, we are putting ourselves at a higher risk of breast cancer. And so that is something that's not being told um, when you're being counseled and, mm -hmm. and that's something that we do need to that we need, do need to learn. Um, we do, that's the information. We need to be able to make an informed decision when we're gonna t do a medical procedure. Right, and not only uh, the risk of breast cancer, but sometimes after the abortion, even if they did want a family later on in life, that can cause problems with fertility, correct? Yes, we do have quite a few women who um, who have shared with us that after the procedure they they weren't they became barren and were not able to to hold another pregnancy mm. so that's and you just don't know that from the get-go you know it is not told and, right um, another thing that I, that I've found that sometimes especially younger girls they don't even know exactly what's happening when a, an abortion is performed. They have no idea what's going on with their body. So education is definitely one of the keys and at a, at a younger age too. Right, yes, the younger the better. Um, our kids know a lot nowadays and through technology they're learning a lot faster and a lot younger than what we used to. Um, and so yes, mm -hmm. education, but the education that we need to give them needs to be very accurate and at their level um, of their understanding. Um, there is many women who, that, that are post-abortive who a lot of their struggle and anger is towards the medical field oh, because mm -hmm. they feel like they were not given all the information ahead of time. And so um, we have some women who hesitate when they have to go to a doctor, even if it's just a general doctor, um, because they feel like they were betrayed mm -hmm. and they were not well informed before they went through the, the procedure. Um, talk a little bit about the man's part here and that they do suffer uh, trauma with this too. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit more about what the, the man yes, goes through? Yes, they do suffer. Um, whether they paid for the abortion and wanted the abortion or whether it was done against their, mm -hmm. their will. Okay. Um, we have had some men come on the Rachel's Vineyard and I never realized how it deeply affects these men. Um, and they, um, I see men weep, mm -hmm. truly just mm -hmm. fall to their, to their knees in regret and weep because um, they too did not know. They, we live in a world where it's like, it's not your choice, it's the woman's choice, it's her body, it's her choice. And, and, but part of that, the DNA of that, of that creation is theirs. Mm -hmm. That's their legacy, that's their family tree. And so um, no matter how it came about, they do suffer as well. And some of the same symptoms that the women suffer the men suffer as well. The triggers with yes. the due dates and holidays and yes. all that affects uh -huh. the men also. Future children, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they have challenges connecting with their future children. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, there's issues with future relationships. Um, and so, so they see it and, and it actually brings them a little bit of peace when they're able to connect. Um, in their healing journey, they're able to connect why they've been having this suffering and they're, they're not mm -hmm. understanding why. And when they start their healing journey, then they can put those two pieces they, together and then they can really dig, dig deep into being able to heal that. I tell you what, uh, Rachel's Vineyard is such an amazing ministry. And um, we're down to like the last few minutes. Um, if you'll just kind of, in case you missed the, the first part, um, go over a little bit about the retreat and what happens, because to me, this is just amazing. So powerful and just amazing. It is. So um, so we began on a Friday evening, um, and the first day we just really tried to create a safe environment um, 
to where they get to know the team and we we do a couple of the scripture readings that I shared earlier mm -hmm. and and um, and we share a video an extensive video of both men and women and their uh, post-abortion experiences their their testimonies um, and Saturday is really when we d dig down deep um, we start off by sharing our stories so um, mm. We go one by one and everyone's able to share their story, which is beautiful because this is really where this healing starts to really come in. Um, because a lot of times these women, after 30, 40 years, have never shared that part of their life with anybody. So it's the um. first time it's actually, they're actually speaking these words. But acknowledgement is a huge part of the, of the healing process. So um, after they are able to tell their stories, um, uh, then we move on to um, more scripture readings and um, by the end of that day they are able to we we want them to reconnect with that child that was aborted and how we do that is uh, there's a there's scripture reading and prayer um, where they get to have um, uh, an encounter with their children we pray for the Lord to reveal to us the gender so that they can Sweet. name their babies um, these babies had life and they, mm -hmm. they deserve a name. Mm -hmm. And so when they do that, it just really starts to connect them. We see that women, a lot of times, um, remember we shared the statistics, 70% of the women having abortions are Christian women that are going to church every Sunday. So they have that foundation. Right. Um, and so when we're able to reconnect them with their child, mm -hmm. um, they now have a new goal to reach eternity. So their whole life changes because now they want to change all the, the, the ways that they're li living mm -hmm. that are not of God. They want to change it and they want to be saved. Um, so, they, so they name their children. And that night we, um, we, they go to their rooms and they write a letter to their children, wow. which is also another very powerful, powerful piece because now they get to say they're sorry. And we see that these women who are, who are Christian women, who have that foundation of the Lord, they, they do feel God's forgiveness. They, that's how they were raised. They, they do feel it, but they cannot forgive themselves. Mm -hmm. And they feel like their that's child has not forgiven them. So these, these steps help them through that process. And then on Sunday morning, we come back and we gather again, and we close out the retreat with a memorial service which is like a funeral. We allow them time to grieve these babies. Imagine one of your loved ones dies and you don't ever have a funeral service mm. and you're not allowed to grieve. You're not allowed to talk about that person. Right. That's hard. That so we create that beautiful environment. So the process is they read this letter and um, once they're done, then they go and they uh, mourn at a bassinet. Um, which is symbolizing a casket mm -hmm. and uh, they mourn there and then our team is there to give our condolences and this allows them closure but it also gives them an opportunity to say okay Lord I release my child to you and um, and and this is now I'm move, my, my commitment is to move forward to reach eternity so I can meet my child one day it yes. is incredibly beautiful how the Lord works mm -hmm. through these scriptures and through women like myself, our team, you know, we've all been there. We've had mm -hmm. abortions. We know the pain and suffering, mm -hmm. but we also have experienced God's mercy oh, and forgiveness and love. Oh, and how beautiful. beautiful that he's using our worst sin to be able to bring others to him, to rekindle that love and to get them back into church. Some of these women end up being the most strongest pro-life warriors that you see mm -hmm. because... They, because they feel that mercy that God has for it's them. It's amazing how God can take something like that and just make it so incredible and so beautiful and um, to bring glory to him, mm -hmm. uh, you know, working in the pro-life. That's just, what a beautiful God makes ministry. all things new. He does. What a yes. beautiful ministry. Um, I would encourage um, people to go on Rachel Vineyard's uh, website. Yes, rachelvineyard.org. There's beautiful testimonies from mm -hmm. the girls and some of the ladies that just really touches your heart about mm -hmm. how the Lord restored and healed. Yes, and them. Rachel's Vineyard's in, in about 50 qu countries, 38 different languages, all over the U.S., so you can go onto that website to find one near you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we're wrapping things up. Are there any last-minute things that you would like to, to share? Um, 
just again, I, I can't encourage enough to, op to talk about it. In our churches, these women are hurting. These women need to hear and acknowledge, yes, it is a grave sin, but he, they also need to know about the mercy of God. Amen. And mm -hmm. also create an environment where they can, when they are faced with an unplanned pregnancy, they know exactly a safe place that they can go to, where they're, they're gonna be guided in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can't encourage that enough because it's not talked about, like you said, it's maybe right. taboo, maybe it's just mm -hmm. the shame and guilt, but we don't right. talk about it enough. Um, also reach out. I, I would love to go to your church and share you know, what I've learned so far. I don't know everything, I'm not an expert, but I, I have learned a lot in the 11 years that I've been serving. And, um, and, and we have had you at our church yes. and you and your husband, it's a powerful story and how you guys met, but yes. you'll have to save that for another time. Yes. But, um, just so we get that out there, you know, Westside Pregnancy Center, we are there for you. Yes. If you have any questions or to know that you're loved and you're not alone, a guiding star, uh, Pregnancy and Fatherhood Solutions, all the pregnancy centers that are in the area, we love you. Uh, we care. We want to be there. We want to yes. give you the truth and the hope in Jesus. So if anyone out there needs us, we would love for you to come. Let's um, close in prayer. Yes. And again, thank you so much. What what great information. And, um, and again, uh, Rachel's Vineyard, uh, can't speak highly enough about it. But thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you, Deb. Thank you for having me. Let's just close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for the time. And Lord, I just thank you for uh, places like Rachel's Vineyard, that these ladies and fathers and, and anyone that has been affected by abortion can go and find healing, can find a hope and a future in you, Father God. Lord, we just love you so much, and we thank you. We ask this in your name. Thank you so much for being with us. Again, if you need us, we're here. We're here. And um, may God truly, truly bless you. And again, if you know somebody that, that needs our help also, if you have a daughter or a granddaughter or a grandson or anyone that's been affected by abortion, um, please feel free to reach out. We are, we are here and we definitely want to be the heart of Jesus. Yes, amen. Again, thank you so much. Thank God you, bless Deb. you. Thanks.